Well, good afternoon. This is the Oxford Downtown Diaries back again for our second official podcast. How are you, Kelly? <laughs> well, I just have to laugh because every time you <laughs> announce the show, I feel like you're like, Kelly, why did you name it this? I Let me tell you a quick story before we get into. Um, we did not test the name of our podcast, but I happened to be out at a work-related mixer one night and I walked in a little bit tardy as I usually do and I had a chorus of people saying oh my gosh will you show me your diary oh will my you read gosh. your diaries about Oxford to us and I was just like oh my great gosh. now that's going to be the running joke so thank you very much <laughs> but- I'm Kelly Westbrook this is Kimberly Smith we are Hi moving guys. on it's a great it's a great name it is a good name and the reason why we have the name let's get into that real quick is because we wanted to share what we do behind the scenes. So you guys get to see on social media, on Facebook, on our videos, in the paper, all of the cool, amazing, wonderful things that we get to do, all of the fun that we're having. But we do a lot of work and we do a lot of things behind the scenes. We can be serious. We can be professional. um, We can be productive. And so we're trying to share a little bit more about what we do um, that maybe you don't get to see every day. So it is a little bit about a little peek behind the curtain of what happens at the DDA. That and, is true. Cause we do look like we're always having a oh, good yeah. time when we post on social, but it's just like, and we do have a good time. We most do have of a good time. time. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, when you look at a social media reel oh, or what they say, it's all good all the time. Exactly. Everything's perfect. So, so this, these are our deepest, darkest secrets. Well, let's not go that far. Okay. <laughs> Just maybe some little insights into us. But, you know, one question really quick. We did this last week with Joe, last week, wink, wink, um, about what was his background. So let's maybe take a minute today before we get into our quick little talk and then our guest today. What's your background and how did you get into the DDA? Well, this is fun. I didn't know this was coming. Surprise. Okay. (laughs) Well, I'm actually, I went to school to be a news anchor, and I took a job with Fox as soon as I got out of school, but I went into sales, trying to then make it to the actual newsroom, and fell in love with sales, and then got picked up by the Detroit Pistons as an executive for sponsorship sales, and then from there, I got hired in by NASCAR down North Carolina, Fun. and not until we started having kids did we make, you know, the trip back home. And then this came out of nowhere for um, the DDA was something that I'd never considered. I never thought I would be in the government realm. But when COVID happened, I came on, my mom's a small business owner, and I came on to help her through everything. And that's when I started to see all the grants and what small businesses were actually doing on a day-to-day basis and the help that they needed. And when the position became available, I thought, you know what, this is something I would really like to do to have the opportunity to help small businesses. So it's one of those things that got as a plan and it fell into my lap, but never did I ever think that I'd be having a podcast for the DDA. There you go. And so what would you say is the favorite part of your job? My partner in crime, obviously. Oh, oh, that's so sweet. No, honestly, it's, it's. Being able to work with the community and actually make a difference. I think that a lot of times we look at government or we look at boards and things like that, and we don't necessarily understand the difference that they're making. But I feel like we make a difference that people can actually see, and that right there brings me joy. So being able to help small businesses get started, being able to help them um, financially with the grants that we have for them, But then also being able to see the change that has transpired over the past three years is huge. And I'm going to I'm going to just pump you up here for a second. Um, Before I started this job, we didn't know each other. And I think a lot of people are very shocked to hear that because because they ask if we're related constantly. (laughs) But I, I I hear so much every time I'm out, I hear what a great job we're doing and what a huge benefit you are to the community and so I won't get stuck too hard on this because I know people want to hear about other things too but you have done a wonderful job in the role and you should be um you should feel really good really good about that 
not having the background in the DDA and then being able to do what you've done in the community. So thank you. I will not cry. Okay. On well, air. No, we don't want to do not that. Cry on air. I appreciate that. So I'll flip it back to you because oh, your background has shocks. nothing to do with the DDA, but no. same thing for you. You know, you came in and you didn't miss a beat. So go ahead and tell us, and then we will introduce our guest, which I'm very excited about. Yes. So uh, my background is in human resources, and I- Which is so funny for our office. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like maybe I shouldn't say some of the things oh, no. I say. You know, there's kind of a joke, a little bit of a joke around the HR community that typically those are some of the biggest offenders, right? Because we know what you're not supposed to do, and we know when you're not supposed to do it. But- um, no, so my background's in HR, and then when I uh, we started a family, I decided to stay home for a period of time, and then you uh, took a shot on me after, that sounded bad, but you gave me a chance, um, and I got the opportunity to come work with you, and um, it's been amazing. I dusted all those cobwebs off that- I was going to say, was it hard to step <laughs> oh back into the working world? It was. I felt so dumb. I really did. Um, just because I had gone for such a long period of time without having to use, like, office or, you know, do a spreadsheet and, you know, do analytics in a spreadsheet. Things that I used to do day in and day out when I worked um, that I was like, oh, it's like riding a bike, but I'm not as effective as I was before. But um, it took a little while, but once it's I got... It's been two years now, though, yeah, right? Yeah, it has been two years. I feel pretty good now. I yeah. mean, hopefully you tell me. <laughs> well, that's why I'm petitioning to add hours on to you, because right now, Kimberly only works 20 hours a week, yeah. and a lot of times I feel like I'm drowning. So if we could yeah. get her a few more, everybody great. would be <laughs> in better be shape. Happy. Yeah. So it's been wonderful. So thank you for taking a chance on me. I think this... I would have never... I joke with uh, people all the time. If you would have told me that I would be working in government, that I would be helping to plan and execute events, I would have laughed at you. Um, but I love it. I absolutely love it. Like the things that I never thought I would be interested in are really the things that I love the most about the job, the social media, the um, event planning, the interactions with the businesses. So I, I love my job. It's really fun. And um, and then add podcasts to the resume. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the engineer. That's right. Yes. yes. She is running our soundboard <laughs> over here. Sound very engineer. proud. I'm very excited about this new addition to my resume. But enough about us. Do you want to talk about, before we introduce our, our guests, do you want to talk about a couple things that are happening in the DDA right now? No. I want to get to our okay. guests. We'll talk about we'll them at the end. I'm too excited. Later. Okay. We are ready to introduce uh, a business owner, someone I think most people within Oxford know and love. Angie from Evergreens, and she has brought along her, her son, Hunter, who is now part of the business, a recent graduate. We won't mention the college, though, because I can't stomach oh, it. <coughs> Ohio think, State. Go oh, Buckeyes. Oh, maybe oh. we'll kick them out now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I thought you were going to say State. Oh, that's my that's other son. That's your other son? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're not friends then. Oh, well, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to the show. We're so excited to have you, and... You know, when we started this podcast and we thought about planning our first couple of shows, we thought, okay, who is one of the first business owners we want to have on? And the reason why we chose you is because you have now gone from a small business to now expanding. And that's why one of you has on the Bagel Bomb logo and one has on the Bros and Dough logo because you just went into the distribution market. So I'm excited for you guys to be here. Congratulations, first and foremost. And let's talk a little bit about what this looks like. So Angie, why don't you start? Awesome. Well, I was an emergency room nurse for 20 plus years. Hard consent. I'm only 35 now. Uh, anyway. Um, You're and, that old? I thought you were younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I it was always a dream of mine on my bucket list to have a coffee shop. So uh, I left the nursing world, although I loved that dearly, uh, eight years ago, and we started Evergreens Coffee Shop. Our last name's Green. That's why we have the name of Evergreens. We're forever the Greens. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. And you guys weren't in the location you are now. So where did you start out of eight years ago? We were in the old grain mill um, on Pleasant Street. Okay. And there's a coffee shop there, so I guess it's a great place for coffee shops. Yeah. 
So you started something. Oh, actually, there was one there before us, but okay. I don't even remember the name of that one. I don't either. I'm not sure. I don't drink coffee, so I don't know. Oh, <laughs> no hate. But I don't know still how you don't drink coffee. I'm on six I'm cups today. Naturally effervescent. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> So eight years ago, we started the uh, Evergreens Coffee Shop. Uh, a couple years later, we invented bagel bombs. There are stuffed bagels out there in the world, but nothing quite as unique as ours. Um, we've got 15 different kinds. They've gone over extremely well in the community. And uh, my son, when he graduated from Ohio State, I've got one at Michigan State. Woo. They said, we need to take this a step further. Um, I love being a part of the community and talking to my customers every day, et cetera. So I wasn't super keen on the idea, uh, but they convinced me that this was the thing to do. So within the last, what would you say, year? Yeah, a year, year and a half, probably. Um, we did a trade show last April with um, MSU Product Center, uh, making it in Michigan, which we'll be attending next month as well. Um, we were able to win the golden ticket. And the golden ticket meant that we had... Uh, the opportunity to have our product in four Meyer Market stores. We're in Lansing, Detroit, Grand Rapids, and Royal Oak. Yep. Uh, and we're doing extremely well there. Loved it. And last month we signed with Lapari Distribution, um, which will be distributing our bagel bombs across 33 states. So Hunter and Gavin have both taken a realm in uh, taking over the wholesaling. And you can elaborate on that. That's yeah. amazing. Before we get into that, just really quickly, for anyone who might be not aware, which I'm sure there are not many, but what is a bagel bomb? Bagel bomb is a made from scratch stuffed bagel. They're all stuffed with cream cheese and various yummies like bacon and cheddar, jalapeno and cheddar, uh, blueberry pie filling, apple pie filling. As I said, we have 15 different kinds. Um, so we've got something for the taste of everyone. And then, real quick, what else do you serve? Because you have other stuff at the coffee shop, too, oh, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. We've got all the specialty coffee drinks. Um, we've got bubble tea, lattes, um, banana bread. We make cakes, cheesecakes. You have sandwiches, Cinnamon right? rolls. We've got a couple of sandwiches. We've got a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah there's definitely something for everyone. Yeah. I, you guys are a frequent you know, of You're my all the time. I know <laughs> we hold a lot of meetings at we Evergreen do, too. and on purpose. And um, because for so long, like my stomach, unfortunately, was so bad. So bagel bombs were a staple in my Aww. diet. And See, you we're know, gonna go in the medical books now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a, it's it's a true, though. solution. Yeah, and I think all. it is because you make from scratch and you make fresh daily and things like that. I wasn't getting all the preservatives, so. Um, yeah, you guys are always a staple in my diet. So Hunter, obviously you're young and you're hungry and no pun intended. And <laughs> you graduated and you said, mom, I think we should do this. And I remember Angie, you coming to me and saying like, Hey, my boys want to do this. What do you think? And I'm like, yeah. And you're like, are you sure? So go ahead and tell us what that conversation was like with your mom when you thought about distribution and wholesaling. Yeah, well, I just kind of saw how much Oxford seemed to love bagel bombs. I mean, they, I don't know, like they were going over really well at the shop and they were kind of the talk of the town. And so from my perspective, it was just like, okay, if our town loves these so much, why can't other towns love them too? You know, why can't we spread the joy and let other people experience this like very unique product? So I kind of wanted to take it a step farther and that's where like wholesaling came into play. And so... That kind of started off by delivering them to other local coffee shops, kind of in different neighboring towns and things like that. And that was going well, but still didn't feel like enough. Mm -hmm. We wanted to go bigger. Um, and so that was kind of when we got the, the golden ticket was soon after that, um, that she mentioned with the, the Meyer market stores. And that was like the first big step into like, okay, this is happening. Like we're going into a retail store. We're going to be on a grocery store shelf. We have to make packaging. We have to get boxes. We have to, because like, this is going to, they're going to be on a shelf in the frozen section or the refrigerated section and things like that. So that's when it started to feel really real and uh, it got really exciting. And so from there, it was just one thing after another and it's just kind of grown. Um, and, you know, so the desire's never left just because it's been, you know, one exciting step after another. And 
you know, now we're with Lapari Foods, and we just got our first pallet picked up last Wednesday. So we've only been there for about a week, and everything we've heard in, is that it's going really well. So we're super excited to see where that goes. And, uh, yeah, the wholesaling has just been a really fun experience so far. Yeah, yeah they've already signed awesome. like 10 stores so uh, in just a small week. So that's awesome. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Oh. Thank you. That is so cool. Did you ever dream when you, you know, you were a nurse and you were transitioning to this, did you ever think that it would be as big as it is? No, definitely okay. not. We were super excited to have it. Like, well, I'm originally from Indiana. Super excited to have it in our hometown. I so, said, yeah, I did that. Um, yeah. And he wants to have it in Columbus, Ohio, where he's met so many awesome people in his college experiences. Yeah. Um, we want to have it at MSU. Um, we are at MSU Dairy Store, but we'd love to be a part of the oh, campus yeah. um, in okay. many more aspects. So we're super excited about where this could go. Good college food for sure. Definitely. So Hunter, what is your background? I know you just graduated from college, but what did you study? Is this in the area that you studied or is this a departure from what you are thinking you were going to do? Yeah, so it was definitely kind of a 180. So I was studying statistics at Ohio State. Uh, I loved it. I was doing like sports analytics. So I worked, I was the president of the sports analytics club there at Ohio State. And so I helped run analytics for the baseball team, soccer team, volleyball, any, you find a team and like I probably was involved in their analytics there at the school, which was an awesome experience. I loved it doing scouting reports for the baseball team, you know, and we'd play that team up north, uh, which is what we refer to as like, that's what Michigan is down there. Um, <laughs> And so things like that, it was just like really fun to be directly involved with the sports there, being that it is such a big sports school. And so I really liked that. And then from there, I uh, kind of utilized those and I got an internship with the Detroit Pistons. And Kelly actually helped put in a good word for me. As she mentioned earlier, she was with the Detroit Pistons and she knew some of the people that were in the department that I was applying for. And so she put in a good word. And of course, when I got the interview they're like oh so you know kelly and oh i'm like i'm like yeah she's the best blah blah, blah. that and seems like so long ago now that you say it though yeah it does yeah. right and so um but that was just i don't know two short years ago yeah. i believe two or three so um yeah so i did that with the pistons and i absolutely loved that it was really enjoyable i did analytics for uh they have a gaming team where they kind of they play nba 2k um competitively against other NBA teams that have a team and so I ran their analytics for that team and so that was really a unique experience I don't know anything really about the gaming world but I know sports I know the numbers and so I kind of you know uh, strung it all together and so yeah my background is definitely in that sports world but then um, you know that I saw the opportunity here with the bagel bomb thing and I kind of was like after doing the Pistons thing I really enjoyed it but I wanted to do my own thing. I'm like, okay, I want to start my own business. I had two great role models as parents that both own their own business. And I really kind of got the itch for entrepreneurship about ha halfway or three quarters of the way through college. Of course, too late to change a major or anything. Um, but so I, uh, I got the itch for entrepreneurship, pondered the idea of starting my own thing. But I'm like, why would I start from scratch when we have these bagel bombs here in Oxford that, like I said, everyone loves and that can go way farther than where it is. And so I, you know, talked to my mom about it. Uh, we had some good family conversations and that's kind of, you know, where I shifted to. It's like, okay, let's, let's make this into something. And uh, so from that point forward, it's been full steam ahead and uh, I've enjoyed every second of it. Yeah. And that's awesome because when we talk about these businesses and we th think about bringing our families into them. Um, um, just like I came on with my mom during COVID. I mean, shoot, that's what you hope for, right? As thinking about my kids and being a parent and how awesome is it to work alongside your own family? Most definitely. But it's great that he's great with numbers. Because I that was is thinking not the same my forte. thing. <laughs> definitely not I my was forte. like, are you interested in another job? Because we could really use the numbers guy. <laughs> that's great. That is a great story. Yeah, and the analytics, I think from when you're talking about wholesaling and distributing, I mean, cr distribution, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, numbers play into that. I mean, that really is a numbers game, correct? Yeah, it is. And so I have been able to utilize my degree and kind of my background 
uh, from time to time with this whole business. And I think that's only going to grow as the business grows and as there's more numbers to keep, more sales to keep track of and things like that. So it hasn't been, it wasn't a complete waste. I mean, nothing's a complete waste. Everything gets you to where you're at. Um, but you know, I, ha I am utilizing some of those skills still. So that's, that's nice at least. Yeah, and then your younger brother, who, does he have about two years left at State? Yes, and he's majoring in business. Okay. And then my husband has his own business as well. So definitely a family affair. We're making it work, and uh, there hasn't been any arguments yet, so that's a good thing. Well, yeah, so Hunter, thing. do you make room for your brother when he graduates yeah. on this team? I mean, he's been very involved even from a distance at school, just kind of as I was like that last my senior year when I was at Ohio State. Gavin is doing that and then some for sure while he's at Michigan State, very involved with the business, especially he's in the entrepreneurship uh, program there at Michigan State. And so the, um, he's done a lot with them with, for this business. And so he's competing in a uh, like a pitch competition here in early April where he can receive grant money for the business. So he's, you know, he's pitching bros and dough and so we're super excited about that and really i couldn't be more proud of him and everything he's done um at school both for the business and just for personal with he's in a business frat there and that's going really well he's very involved with that and he's just he's doing great over at school so yeah um, that's awesome and I, so I'm looking at your logos as we talk through this. And I know that, you know, we've always known it as the bagel bomb. And now as you go into distribution, your bros and dough, does Oxford still maintain the bagel bomb designation or will you eventually switch here in Oxford? Well, we wanted to separate the businesses. There are other bagel bombs out there in the world. And so we wanted people to know that what the true, uh, stuffed bagel that we have produced so we changed the name to bros and dough uh, being that i've got two sons that are brothers and i guess i make the dough uh anyway um so we wanted to definitely make a distinction compared to other stuffed bagels that are out there and uh yes we will eventually change things but God, old habits are hard to break yeah and i can't imagine oxford without the bagel bomb i'm not sure you can change it here yeah. But it's still the same old awesome yeah. yes. stuff. Bagel. Formerly known as the bagel bomb. Exactly. So what has been the biggest challenge for you as a small business owner expanding and growing your business? How much time do we have on this? Oh, oh yeah. wow. A couple yeah. minutes. Can we get the Cliff Notes version? Okay, the Cliff Note <laughs> version. Uh, just staying organized. Um, I mean, with my background in emergency room nursing, I obviously don't have a small business or a strong business background, uh, but I know how to hustle yeah. and I know how to make it work. Um, and that's what I bring to the table. So I've always had a passion and a love for baking. Um, so I depend and lean on others that are good with numbers and good in the business aspect um, with the other things that I needed. So that's been the biggest hurdle is knowing when to ask for help and when to just roll with the punches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you were one of um, the first businesses that went through our grant process when I came in three years ago. Um, your beautiful awning with your logo up there was a grant that was received by the DDA. And then I can remember your husband, Rich, coming in to build out the inside of your building and just, um, I think, the Boulevard Boutique coming over to decorate. And you really did lean on your other community members, which we love to see as the DDA. Community is everything, especially for a small business. So you just need to know when to ask and they'll be there for you. And our community has definitely been there for us. Yeah. I think for us, from the DDA standpoint, you have been incredibly supportive as a business owner, as a friend, as a person. Um, you know, you're always willing to ask for our input or share with us what you have going on. And you're always willing to participate in things that we have going on. Um, one thing that I was thinking of as we were talking is when Oakland County, because it's the Thrive program that we spoke about in our last session, <clears throat> excuse me, our last podcast, um, before it was called Thrive, it was a different business forward. Business forward. Mm -hmm. You were one of the first businesses to raise your hand and say, hey, I want I want to participate in this and see what this is all about. What can you do for me? What, how can you help me? And so it's that kind of engagement and involvement and support from business owners that we love to see because it helps us 
continue to do the things that we're doing at the DDA, right? So but thank it's you. such a give and take. Uh, MSU has been great. Um, we've been a part of M- MSU Product Center. Oakland County's done amazing things. We've had great mentors along the way. I, we don't even have time for me to list them all. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's been wonderful. And we hope that it uh, shows that we love our community and then we can receive the love back. It's great. Yeah, agreed. And Angie sits on our promo committee. Yeah. So within the DDA, we have four committees that meet monthly. And really, it's the makeup through the Main Street program at Oakland County is really how we run and keeps us on track. And so you sit on the promo committee, and we're so grateful for that because not only do you bring a small business perspective, but you really are creative. And I think we see that through Bagel Bomb and then Bros and Dough. So we're grateful for business owners sitting on those committees because then we really can understand and have a pulse on the community and the business community. Exactly. So what's next? What's next for Evergreen? Well, we've got to have some secrets. No. We do have some other product lines that we will bring out oh. eventually, uh, but we're going to get, uh, see where, I can't say bagel bumps, but see where these stuffed bagels <laughs> with frozen dough bring us, and then we'll bring on new products after that. If you need taste testers, Ooh. I'm volunteering I, us me right too. now. Over here, pick me. Yes. Yes. Do you want to do any teasers? Any hints? What do you think? I don't know. That's, that's all, you, I mean, that's all you. We'll, we'll stick with stuff. Okay. Oh. Stuffed. Okay. Oh, is that the teaser word? That's Stuffed the teaser, teaser. word. Stuff. Okay. Stuffed. Okay. Okay. I like. This. I love that too. That's awesome. Well, thank you both for yes. being here. Yes. If you need us, you know where to find us. I mean, you guys are so great at always getting our input and bouncing ideas off of us, and we love that because we work with over a hundred businesses in our downtown. So sometimes we don't know when to come to certain business owners or if they need us. So by you guys having such great communication with us and always coming in, we're just so grateful for the relationship that the DDA has with you. And we could not be any more excited about what is to come. Yes. So congratulations. And then Hunter, I just want to shout out to you. I mean, how awesome is it that you're 21, you said? 23. Oh, I'm sorry. 23. My my bad. 23. over here. 23 years old, just graduated from college, and you're working like as a very key player in a small business. That's something to be really proud of. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, I definitely, you know, have a great group around me. Like I said, working with my mom and my brother has been amazing and, you know, her staff at Evergreens helping bake a lot of what we do with bros and dough. Uh, like that's, you know, everyone that is around me is great. And so that's kind of a big role in that. So good. That's awesome. So cool. All right. So what do you want to talk about? For I the DDA? just want to talk about our beautiful public spaces that okay. are coming up here and how we're going to activate them this summer. And, and really I want to talk about it because I walked it today okay. in the freezing cold. It was 22 mm. degrees today when I was walking it. Okay. Um, we were actually back there trying to decide with Excel what our lighting is going to look like. Okay. And it's just, you know, you try to envision these public spaces that we got these awesome grants for, and then it all starts to come together, and you have to consistently be reevaluating you know, and talking to the business owners and seeing what they're comfortable with. So it's been a lot, but we have now three community spaces, Mm -hmm. more to come. So we have Washington Square, which I'll give you all the kudos and credit to naming that space. Again, I have to, I have to give my kudos to my think tank. That's right. They helped me. They helped me there. It's your think tank though. Yeah. And then, so we are re-envisioning that space for this year. Mm -hmm. So we met with a community member this morning that's going to help us to do these eight-foot planters that are on wheels so that we can move them. Because let's be honest, with all these events, who's out there lifting all the things and moving the things? It's us, us too. And our intern. Oh, yes. And I'm very excited to have a new intern. We'll get to that in a minute. Yes, but... We are going to have additional green space in Washington Square this year. Um, Some, I think, I guess we're kind of blocking off certain spaces, making it feel not as large, more intimate. Intentional. Yes, yes. So we met with uh, a vendor this morning for that. 
And then in there, we'll host line dancing on Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. We'll host the car shows on Wednesday nights Mm -hmm. with Sick Pizza, which will be great. Those are always fun. Your markets, I'm going to call them your markets because you are the market master. Market master. And that'll be Thursday. Yes. So we did get that question not that long ago. Someone had asked when we were um, trying to solicit their attendance at our market who the market master was. And that's the second time I've heard somebody utilize that term. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I think we should maybe add that to your business card. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. That's great. There's no, not enough room anymore. <laughs> There's so many. And. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's our first public space that we're hosting this year. And then we have the patio. Mm-hmm. Let's just do oh, it. Big O. Big I think o. this is going to be like the sign yeah. now. <laughs> and that one, we are going to host a cornhole league while Washington Square and that space. And mm-hmm. that one's behind Red Naps mm-hmm. where Grab Cap is. And that space is pretty much done. We need to spruce it up a little bit, new umbrellas, but that space is looking yeah. really good. We got the fire pit out there mm-hmm. this past weekend for the bar crawl. Yeah. So that'll be nice. And Grab Cap, Sullivan's, and Sick Pizza, Sick Pizza are going to host um, the Cornhole League. And I just got word yesterday that the tap is going to come on to oh, that, too. Awesome. So that's good. And yeah, I fun. think that just goes to show the community support we have. That's amazing. And then we have our newest space, and that's the courtyard, the courtyard behind Victoria's. And I think you're probably the most excited about this one. And why is that, Kimberly? Well, there's wine. Yes. So, I mean, it's wine down Wednesday. Who doesn't love wine? Yes. But <laughs> let's. I think this is going to be great because we're going to activate this with some big band music, yeah. little mm-hmm. snacks, glasses of wine. Yeah, Victoria's is going to have a little atmosphere. Yeah, and I love the fact that we're going to have lights overhead, Mm -hmm. have a fire pit out there. Mm This will be more of a quiet space, I feel like. Yeah, I think just an opportunity to come relax a little bit more. Um, But one thing I did want to ask, as you were mentioning, since we circled back to the courtyard, is one of the things I would imagine as you're starting to activate these spaces And working to complete it is the budget and seeing where the dollars, you know, just like in life, I would imagine, money disappears. It's crazy how money disappears so quickly at for groceries and eating out and kids and activities and vacations. So similarly, you have a pool of money, you have a budget, and then you have all of these great ideas that we want to do to activate the spaces. How do you decide what you actually go with and what happens when the budget kind of goes off the rails? Yeah, so the budget is one of my favorite things to talk about, (laughs) obviously. I'm such a numbers person. You're welcome. (laughs) Yeah. So the DDA, we're funded by the TIF plan, which thankfully just approved for the next 20 years. But in that, we operate on less than a half million dollars a year. And everything that we do from all of our events to our salaries to everything that we have to buy to, Office you know, supplies. yes, yeah. everything comes out of that. So when you break it down, it's not much. And so we've been really good at getting grants. I mean, I'll give mad props to Ashley Ross, mm-hmm. who is on our economic vitality and Grace was on Perry. our board and Grace Perry. And they're so great with grants. But then the other part is really just this planning to make sure that everything we're doing, we're going out and getting the quotes and budgeting appropriately. Um, With these two spaces, we were able to stretch that budget so that everything that we needed to get done, we got done. And we've done a great job doing that. Um, And we've done a great job saving over the past three years. And a big part of that is sponsorship from the businesses Mm -hmm. that come alongside us so that we can do these events. So that we're not having to dig into that pot of money each time. And then we can redo these spaces. Um, The other part that's coming up that the public doesn't know yet is we're about to get ARPA funding um, through the Main Street program in Oakland County. So this was a big project that I helped to work on the past two years to uh, go to bat and try to get the funding. And we just got word that we are getting the funding. So these public spaces that you see right now, we're going to be able to expand those by another like 150 percent with what we're doing which is incredible yeah absolutely so and I'm hoping also to fix up verdict street a little bit yeah yes we have so much traffic that we see like foot traffic yes when we have events downtown between the different quadrants and a lot of that is 
I went on to say sneaking, but trying to sneak across Burdick. Yes. Um, so you mean us. Well, it's, it's really us. When we leave our office, well, we, we try to make it to the market. We do that too. But I do see other people trying to do that yes. as well. It's just a natural kind of inclination from parking lot to parking lot, even though the crosswalk is relatively close. Yes. So you we're know. going to add crosswalks on Burdick Street mm-hmm. from place to place to make sure that we're getting safely. We are increasing walkability mm-hmm. in our downtown which will be incredible because that's what we talk about all the time is how do we increase walkability so that people can go to multiple stores, multiple restaurants, and get around town easily Mm -hmm. and and safely. And go to the park and go to the markets and all of those things. Yes. Very fun. And they're going to want to do that this summer because what we have planned. It's going to be so fun. I know. And the trolley is going to be running with Mm -hmm. our new sponsors. We're so grateful. Stained. Yes, we're going to stain it and little, make it look fresh and beautiful. Little, uh, Although the new logos did go on this week. They so look good. Meyer, Oxford Tap, and Oxford Bank mm-hmm. all came alongside us to sponsor the trolley to continue it to run. Yeah, so very exciting. They look stuff. great. Good stuff. Um, can you let the public know, though, how they can sign up? A couple of our different yeah. things do have to have tickets. Correct. Or they have to have people signing up. Correct. So how do you do that? How do you do that? So for the vendor market, although we are almost at capacity, we're still reviewing some um, vendors, but we do like to have kind of a wait list in queue for those that maybe have a last minute conflict and can't attend. You have the opportunity to apply for that on our website. Um, So there's a little form, you know, on the main page, if you go down about halfway, there's an application form for that. Um, When it comes to the line dancing and the cornhole, we do have tickets available on our OC Main Street shop that is like the Etsy for Oxford. Um, The links for all of those are on our Facebook page. But if you have any questions, message us on Facebook, email us, whatever is easiest, and we can get you the exact link of where to go for those items. Yeah, the Shop OC Main Street page is wonderful because all of our businesses can have a presence there, and it's really an e-commerce site for all of Oakland County, but then it has a specific drop down to Oxford. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact that people can purchase there, and not that I don't want them to come into our office and see us, (laughs) but they don't have to. They can. They can come in and purchase with us. But this is such a great way to do it, to streamline it. Yeah. And, um, man, I think line dancing and the Cornhole League, it's going to be a blast. And the other cool thing about the OC Main Street is, you know, I could go on there and I could buy some items for – um, Easter for my kids Easter baskets and I could buy line dancing tickets and I could buy a shirt from a you know a, a restaurant and I'll you know pay for it with one yeah it's a one one stop shop yeah so that's the coolest part I think man I think we have to dig probably further into sure. that but different topic different day. different day exactly Anything else you want to share before we head out today? Nope, we're great. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. All right, bye, guys.